everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series on the Sega STV or Sega Titan Video Arcade Board. And today we're taking a look at Cotton 2. I know what you're thinking, why Cotton 2 and why not Cotton Boomerang? And it is down to this one simple fact. I flipped a coin and this game won. But honestly, Cotton 2 and Cotton Boomerang are basically different sides of the same coin. And I slightly prefer Cotton 2 anyway, so this works out really well for all of us. Before you get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But Cotton 2 is obviously the sequel to the original Cotton that was released in arcades and had an excellent port on the Sharp X68000. And this is the sequel on the Sega STV. And I absolutely love Cotton 2 because it has three of my favorite qualities as far as retro gaming shmups are concerned. One, it is more methodical and closer to something like Pulse Star than it is just a bullet hell game. Two, the gameplay is absolutely spectacular. And three, it's in that more fantasy cute em up genre. I've always loved games like Parodius, Tobey, Polystars. I like the bright, colorful, private nature of something like Cotton 2 slightly more than I like your classic, you know, space shmup, as it were. I just love the animations, the colors, the gameplay, and everything about Cotton 2, and that's why it's definitely one of those games that I think is near perfect. And it's just so much fun to play on the Sega STV. And you'll see right here, I'm into the first boss fight. And another reason why I like Cotton 2 over Boomerang is you'll see in the top left hand corner, our character has a life bar. You can take more than one hit before you die. Where in Boomerang, they pivoted more towards a one hit, one life situation. There's nothing wrong with either mechanic, but I kind of like the fact that you don't have to play flawlessly in this game, because as much as I love playing shmups, I'm only okay-ish at some of them. Some of them I'm slightly better than most, and some of them I'm absolutely terrible. But you'll see here, right after you beat the boss, you get the classic cotton tea time, and each urn of tea, I don't know what they're called, honestly, gives you a little bit more life back. But I just love this game visually and aesthetically. Not only is it fun to play, but the enemy designs, the characters, the levels, the soundtrack are all part and parcel of a package that comes together to be one of my favorite shmups of all time. It really is just that good. And honestly, the Cotton franchise is definitely a little bit more hit and miss than some of the other big shmup franchises. Games like Cotton, Cotton 2, Cotton Boomerang are absolutely spectacular, but there are some other Cotton games that change up the shmup formula to something closer to like a Planet Harrier style game and while that is still a really fun experience it pales in comparison to the original shmups that we're looking at here so definitely if you've never played any game in the cotton franchise start with the 2d side scrolling shmups and then maybe transition to more of those planet harrier style action games but this is just a spectacular game and it is relatively long for an arcade game as well but i would say for a shmup this is fair i'm playing it on normal difficulty you can increase or decrease that as you wish but i would say that any mistake you make in this game is because you made it yourself this does not feel like one of those shmups where you're going to have some forced deaths because you'll see i took a couple hits early and that's because i wasn't paying attention to my screen space but when he starts shooting off these i say he i don't know if that flower is male or female what does it matter you can start navigating around those projectiles and as long as you get into the right rhythm you're really going to start realizing that everything is in your control if you're playing well and you're missing bullets and dodging them everything feels spectacular if you're taking a lot of hits that means you need to rethink your strategy but for an arcade game this does have a relatively decent amount of story granted it is all in japanese so i'm not going to be able to tell you what any of it means you could presume but as good as this game looks as great as it plays it also has a really fun soundtrack so go ahead and listen for like 35 45 seconds and i'll be right back but enjoy
I mentioned the soundtrack, it's kind of got a jazzy beat to it, I really like it. But you'll see here that I haven't shown you yet, there's also a capture mechanic where you can just grab enemies and throw them at other enemies. I don't use it as much in standard gameplay, but when I'm trying to take something off the wall that's going to be an obstruction, you really want to worry about that capture mechanic because it's going to make it so that you can easily breeze through those sections. But I love the fact that this is on the Sega Titan video, which is just basically a Sega Saturn with cartridges, because you get a lot of those 32-bit effects. That sprite there that's kind of wiggling and wavering around that's not something that you normally see on a 16-bit system but because this board has the same power as the Sega Saturn you get a lot of these interesting visual effects and I think it goes to make a really nice looking world and I'm kind of jumping around back and forth just to show you guys different levels it's kind of almost like a Halloween feeling game. It's definitely got like a slight horror vibe. You'll see those demons up there. I'm assuming they're demons with one eye flying around. The game isn't exclusively quote unquote horror themed, but most of the levels are. But every once in a while you get something completely different like this aquatic level here. You have seahorses, you have those nautiluses, or not a lie, I would assume if that's the plural of a nautilus, coming at you and we're gonna have a really big aquatic enemy in the end that almost feels like a Taito game in that respect for this one level. So it does play around with the different visuals. I'd say the underwater world might not be my favorite as far as the actual structure of it's concerned, but I think it's got one of the best bosses in the game. This giant, well, let's just call him a big hermit crab, I'm sure that's wrong. His attack patterns are really fun, and once you get used to them and realize how those arms are coming out and how you kind of need to meticulously waver back and forth to avoid them, once you figure out his strategy, it becomes a ton of fun. And that's the thing about this game, is it basically happens the same way every single time. So you can really memorize a level, memorize the game, get really good at it, and get to that one credit clear completion relatively quote unquote easy. Now getting a 1cc in any shmup is not an easy experience, but some games are much harder than others. And this would be the type of game that if you wanted to get to the 1cc ability, this would be a good place to start but you'll see here as we get to stage six that horror element comes back in and i love that background as it distorts and turns in on itself every inch of this game is filled with detail and it's unfortunate that we're getting shot at so often because what i really love to do is look at all of that detail but you'll see here when i talk about that capture mechanic these i don't even know what they are on the ceilings shooting those bits of lava at you if you capture them you don't need to worry about trying to get through that opening in the projectiles quickly enough because you're removing them from the playboard completely so if you do play this game remember that the capture mechanics not the most useful when you're just fighting scrub enemies but when you get to a certain place in time where you're really trying to just create a path forward for yourself using it is going to be super important and that's what i love about this game is so strategy based learning all the patterns learning how to move throughout the level if you've ever played pulse star on the neo geo aes or mvs you'll know what i'm talking about when i'm talking about cotton 2. now this game is much faster and has a lot more going on but it still feels like that type of game that's almost a memorization based game the more you play it the more you learn the patterns all of a sudden, that muscle memory is going to be second nature. You're going to know exactly what you need to do and when. And I am just 100% into the boss fights. They're big, they're dynamic, they're action-packed, and each boss has its own strategy that you need to deal with. Because you'll see here, as this flying knight comes towards us, he's shooting out different patterns of projectiles. He's thrusting that lance forward. There's a lot of different things that you need to worry about at once. And I even touched on the leveling system, which I'll let you discover if you want to play the game, because it is quite fun, and all the different magical elements that you can collect from the crystals. I love talking about these games more from a feel and a gameplay perspective of what I enjoy about them, and less so talking about all the underlying mechanics. But if you get into this game, finding out what the mechanics are is really easy to do if you just look it up. But short of that, that is Cotton 2. Remember, Cotton Boomerang does exist. It's kind of like a pseudo sequel to this that's more of a remix of the game i just like the life bar system in cotton 2 a little bit more but leave me a comment down below if you ever played cotton 2 i know this was just recently re-released as a remaster so that's a good option for you as well but short of that i'll have another saturn video next wednesday and videos throughout the week see you next time Bye bye